Hi everyone. Uh, today we'll see uh, frame one interview questions. So which they frequently asked to interviews. Okay. So the first one. So the recently they're asking us. How many number of repositories you can create in your project? Or how many number of repositories you have in your, I mean, your project? So you can create, you can create, or how many repositories you have in your project? Okay, so usually if you are joined to any project, okay, so the folders and repositories you will not create. So that is already done by administrators. So just they provide the details with us based on that we create the repositories. But originally it is created by the administrators. We just configure them uh, based on the details. We never create as a developer, we never create any repositories or folders. And also you will not have an access to do that. Only you can perform a configuration because you don't have a permissions to do that. But here, how many repositories you can create if anyone asks an interview, you can say that there is no limit. As per the project requirement, we can create the, or we can configure the repositories. There is no limit. So we can create n number of repositories as per the project requirement. Suppose the project looking for five repositories, the project looking for only two repositories, then you may configure those many as per the administrator, I mean, details what they provided with us. So the answer here is no limit. And the second question is, so difference between fact and the factless Factless fact table. So this is like a frequently asked question. So fact table contain keys and measurable values both. Okay, what is that? Keys and measurable values. Okay, so fact table contains keys and measurable values, but coming to Factless fact table, it just contain only keys, no measurable values. Okay, that is what the main difference. So, and also, if anyone ask, so can you define fact table and dimension table? Fact table is a child table and dimension uh, table as a parent table. Okay, so if anyone asks the difference here, so what's the difference? So majorly this is a dimension table as a parent table, we derive the fact table based on the dimension table. Okay, so fourth one is, look up over right. So which scenario we are using this lookup override? So can you tell me what are the different scenarios you have used this lookup override? So whenever you use a lookup transformation, that is a lookup override, okay? So whenever you want to customize your query, then we may use this. I mean, whenever you want to customize the lookup query, okay? So default audit will generate so if not all the columns you are returning. So if you select, as if you generate this query, it will, whatever the ports you are returning to the next level, everything will be generated. And what are the conditions you have? Everything based on that, it will generate the query. So I don't want to use the default query, which is generated by the lookup. So I want to customize it as per my requirement. Then you may, whoa, I mean, you can write the customized query in the lookup overhead. So suppose there is an example. Okay, so by default, what it will do, whenever you generate this lookup override, it will sort all the columns by default. Okay, suppose I want to order by 
only two columns. Yes, you can write order by the two columns. Suppose column number one and the column number two. You can you can mention these dots. This is, this is sorry, this uh, hyphen. So automatically it will stop ordering all the columns. So like that, if you want to customize anything, suppose if you select, suppose if you generate a, a lookup over it, where it will generate select class for all. I just want to select only two columns and I want to return those two values to the next level. Then yes, you can write select the two columns, one comma two from this lookup table. So I don't want to generate it or else let's see. Uh, my lookup table having a 15 million records. I mean, sorry, 50 million records. That's I have a huge data. So in that, it contains active and inactive records. Whenever we perform a lookup condition, what it will do, it will try to match all the records. Suppose I want to get only the active records. Usually when we uh, use this SCD type two, we always use this lookup override query so to get the active records. So usually we do the lookup on the target table, right? So it have millions of records in it. So instead of checking all the records, you can override the query to just get the active records. So that's one, one, one uh, default uh, method we, we used whenever we use this uh, S3 type two, because target table contain millions of records. So whenever we perform a match between that source to target, so it perform all the millions of records what you have. So to avoid that, to improve performance, we just write a query to get the active records. Okay, so that is the thing. And uh, so the things that's, that's enough. Okay, if you explain these many things, that's enough. Okay. Um, the fifth one, I can say that this frequent loss course difference between stop and abort. Right? Everyone knows that. And let me recap the stop and abort. So I think I. Initially, I think I told sometimes, but anyway, let me cover this once again. So this stop and abort, okay, so where we can see that in the uh, workflow monitor. Okay, whenever you're trying to stop or if you want to kill the process, suppose you have created a mapping, you have designed the session, then after that, you connected the workflow, you started running that. So after that, you realized after two, three minutes, okay, so the logic is wrong, whatever you have implemented, I don't want to load the data, then you can stop that. Okay, so then what is the difference here, stop and above? Both functionality wise, it is same to uh, stop that particular workflow uh, whenever you try to stop it. But the main difference here is stop, whenever you issue the stop command, top of the workflow, it will try to commit the data and try to process the data. So it will take a lot of time. Suppose let's assume you have 1 million records in your source, already 10,000 records. You already, it is read from the source. It's okay. Then you started, I mean, you are, I mean, started stopping the workflow. Then that is trying to process the data and try to commit the data as well. Okay. That's the reason stop is always taking lot of time compared with a band. I mean, this is slower. So whenever you use the stop command, it will slower than a bot because it is trying to commit the data. Okay, so that's the answer they expect. But coming to a bot is just issue the kill command. Okay, just issue the kill command. That means it will kill the process. It, it don't bother about the what data you are reading and what data you are trying to commit. You don't bother about that. You simply kill the process. I think the maximum uh, time for this is 60 seconds. So before that, you should do that. So if anyone asks, stop is slower than ABAT. And it, why? Because it is trying to commit the data. So but ABAT is just like a kill command. It will just kill the process immediately. So it is faster. So if they ask the, which one you prefer, you can go with that abort because abort will be faster. So this is another question. 
Okay, let me just a minute. Just a given moment. The last question. Okay, so last question for today is so. So when I when I take in the interview, the many people are not able to answer this. So what is the default condition in filter or rotor? So this, they aware of that what is the filter and rotor, but if they suddenly ask us, so what is the default condition? So they are not able to say that. So the default condition in filter and rotor is true. So whenever you configure that, whenever you configure that. It is like a default condition you will have called it true. But many people are saying that there is no condition. So whenever we configure it, it's like a blank. So we need to configure it. So that is wrong. So whenever you just add the transformation to the designer, automatically you will have that condition called true by default. That means if you configure that, suppose let's assume you have a source and you have a filter and you have a target. Okay. so. You just drag and drop all the columns from source to filter, then all the columns you connected to target. So if you run your mapping, what will happen? Absolutely, it will succeed because there is a condition called true in your uh, filter. So automatically, it will allow all the rows from source and load it to target. It won't fail. Okay, that's what I have to remember. So that's all for today. So next session, we'll see a few more questions uh, which the frequently asked in interviews. Absolutely.